Philadelphia has a history of uh, having great light heavyweights. One of my favorite fights uh, is Mike Rossman and against Victor Galindis. I remember how stunned everybody was when Mike Rossman pulled out a victory which stunned the boxing world. Sam Smith along with Al Bernstein. We're at the Superdome in New Orleans for round number one. Again, Mike Rossman against Victor Galindez. A light heavyweight title fight, and quite obviously, Galindez trying to keep that title defense going for the 11th consecutive time. Al, we pointed out at the top of the show that uh, Mike Rossman, at 22 years of age, comes in somewhat of an underdog here, and so he has to try to establish himself, I assume, quite early. Well, uh, I don't think the Galindez camp really expects him to be that formidable a challenge. He's not a tremendous puncher, Mike Rossman, uh, and so I don't think they feel he's got enough power to really hurt Galindez. And uh, Rossman, though, feels he can box Galindez effectively. He's seen some other people do it in the previous fights, Yaki Lopez and Eddie Gregory. Mike Rossman, Rossman that is, from Turnersville, New Jersey. 34 wins, 4 losses, 3 draws, 21 knockouts by Rossman. Amazing record at the age of 22. He has had a lot of fights at this point in his career. Galindez at 29 has a record of 55, 9, and 4. But again, he had gone in his last six title defenses had gone the entire 15 rounds. And people wondering what kind of sting he still had in the gloves. Of course, Galindez with the red with his back to you. Rossman's using the jab starting out a little bit, and uh, that's a punch that's going to be important for him. He'll need that uh, to be effective against Galindez. You can see the lack of action here early. Galindez is the kind of fighter who really likes to back himself against the ropes and counterpunch, but Rossman isn't advancing that much, so uh, Galindez uh, going after him a little bit. What weapon is Rossman trying to unleash here, Al? What would be the thing he would try to unload with early? Well, he's got a very good left hook. I think he wants to establish a jab early so that he can uh, touch Galindez with it. There was a left hook that just missed. But for Rossman, his best power punch would be the left hook. And there it is. <laughs> so one minute left to go in round number one. This is the light heavyweight championship fight. Victor Galindez, once again the champion. Rossman, even though he's a big underdog, still feels in his own heart he's got a golden opportunity to take that title in the light heavies. Neither fighter really scoring that well here in round number one. Very uh, careful, tentative uh, feeling out round. And uh, for Rossman, certainly his biggest moment to this point uh, in boxing. And uh, tension, uh, I'm sure, for him in this first round in front of this big crowd at the, at the Superdome. Under 30 seconds to go, round one. Neither fighter really being able to establish what he would like to do early in the fight here in round one. Again, as you can see, Galinda's trying to draw Ross in on the ropes, but Ro Rossman has not taken the bait as of yet. So as we close round number one of our super bouts, once again, Mike Rossman and Victor Galindis will be back in a moment. for the light heavyweight championship. Mike Rossman coming out against the champion, Victor Galindis. Galindis in the red, again, Rossman in the blue. Neither fighter really establishing much in round number one of their fight from the Superdome in New Orleans. Galindis coming after Rossman a little bit more. Uh, Victor Galindis always tries to lure his opponent into coming after him so that he can counterpunch, but now this is a different Victor Galindis. He is going after Mike Rossman. Interesting, Sam, that both fighters have the same really good weapon, the left hook. So you would anticipate they'd be battling it out with that punch. Both at times, as you take a look where Rossman, of course, holding the guard almost just under a peekaboo style, just under the nose. Galindis, of course, drops it down about shoulder height, but he too will peek between those gloves most of the night, almost a looking into a mirror of each other as they fight here in round two. Good jab by Rossman. Rossman using that jab very effectively early in this fight, and I know that's something he would like to do in this fight. Galindis at his heavyweight status, light heavyweight status, still fighting somewhat, I think, in the shadow of the middleweight, Carlos Monzon, who is in the crowd watching this fight in New Orleans. Great uh, middleweight champion from Argentina, and uh, there just isn't enough uh, 
accolades to go around in that country when Monzon is around because he is such a, a tremendous champion. Good body work by Rossman. He is uh, going downstairs as well. So early on, he may be surprising Galindas a little bit. We're a little over halfway through round number two. Galindas again with the red. Rossman in the blue. Good left right off the ropes by Galindas and Al. Exactly that's what he was trying to do to, to draw Rossman to the ropes and being able to counter with it. He works very effectively from that posture. And uh, you have to be very careful as you come in. Rossman lands a good combination, but you have to be careful as you come in because Galindas can clock you with a, a counter right. Good left to the head that time by Rossman just slipping over the guard of Galindas. Really still the crowd anticipating fireworks to come of this one. It has not so far, even though it's starting to pick up, as you can see here in round two. Good right hand by Galindas. He is he throws that short chopping right very effectively. Under 25 seconds to go, round two. Here's where Galindas likes to work on the inside. So far, though, Rossman's worked well on the inside himself. Rossman, of course, being very cautious not to get into the ropes with Galindas. Galindas, as you can see, very carefully starting to back to the ropes. Knows exactly where he is in the ring. And Rossman getting a left right combination as a bell. Sounds to end round number two. And, well, it is very early indeed as round number three just about to start. Light heavyweight championship fight. Victor Galindas in the red. Mike Rossman, the underdog and the challenger in the blue. Rossman comes out quickly, just poking that jab into the eye. Of Galindez and quite obviously into the cut. They have closed it well. It is not bleeding at the moment here at round three. But it is definitely there. And that's got to give Mike Rossman confidence at this point. Stepping in against Galindez in uh, his first title try again, as we mentioned, the underdog in front of a big crowd in New Orleans. And uh, that will give him, I think, some confidence here. Galindez missing with that wild right hand. Indeed, he does like to throw that. You know, we were talking about the mental approach to this and that loss to Yaki Lopez for, of course, uh, Rossman still must be playing in his mind. He's maybe kind of daydreaming of a, of a punch or two, I'm sure. Well, it was the only time he'd been stopped. It was a technical knockout, and uh, um, he had a couple of fights in between that one and this. Galinda's fight, so his confidence is, uh, had been built a little bit, and uh, he's fighting well in there. He is fighting with confidence tonight. So apparently he has put that fairly out of his mind even though the subconscious will not let you totally disregard something can happen in that extent. But nonetheless he's fighting the fight I think he wants to against Galindez who again ever present on those ropes or at least near them trying to use them as a weapon. Victor Galindez has spent most of his career with his back against the ropes but uh, often he's been able to fight well off those ropes and I think there is still blood around that right eye that cut I think is reopened now. And if there's any particular weapon Rossman is trying to use it is that flip left jab just trying to continue to irritate that eye. As Galindas again keeping Rossman on the ropes where he can do some damage. Good uppercut slipped in on Rossman that time. Galindas likes to maul and brawl inside like this and he, he presumably has better upper body strength than Mike Rossman. He would want to make wage this fight on the inside if it's at all possible. One minute to go round number three light heavyweight title fight. Victor Galindas along with Mike Rossman. Galindez again cut on the right eye. It'll be looked at almost for the entire duration of the one minute between rounds as it started to bleed uh, at the end of round two. Rossman doing some good infighting here. He continues to maybe surprise Galindez a little bit. Good straight left that time by Galindez slipping to the body of Rossman. Rossman has to be careful not to get lured into a, a brawl on the inside with Galindez. He's fared well in that posture, uh, better than, uh, as we said, some people expected, but he, if he gets lured into that entirely, it could be a problem for him. A warning to Rossman on a possible butt of the head. As the light heavyweight title fight in New Orleans, Louisiana comes to the end of round number three. We'll continue with more in a moment. Light heavyweight champion from Argentina, Victor Galindez, answers the bell for round four against his challenger, Mike Rossman, here at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. Galindez making his 11th title defense since 1974, and as he answers the bell in the fourth, 
Al Bernstein, as you look back over since 74 to 1978, have there been any style changes by Galindez, the way he's fighting here tonight against Rossman? Well, you know, if anything, Galindez over the course of that time has become uh, more of a counterpuncher, has become uh, uh, more passive in the ring. Early in his career, he was they called him the wild bull because he would maul and brawl, as we saw him doing a moment ago against Rossman. But in recent years, he's been very content to lure fighters in. They have to, after all, come to him to get that championship and counterpunch. Now he's, he's rumbling toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rossman. Rossman answered a couple of those punches, but I think for the most part, the champion slipped most of them and then scored well with him. That becomes another question here as we're in round four. When does Rossman start to maybe try to force it to get more points and try to get the scoring going his direction here? In this championship fight, Al. Well, I think some of these rounds are pretty close, and he may be content to stay in there at this point and know that he can fight with Galindez and peck away. Still got that cut on the right eye of Galindez that he will want to peck away at. And uh, uh, Rossman showing good patience here, which um, may be a virtue in this fight for him. Corner of Rossman, have they picked up anything, Galindez? Obviously, they're keeping him off the ropes. They're not taking that bait that he tried to pick. Is there anything else that maybe they have picked up at this stage of the fight? Well, I think at this point, they can see what uh, Galindez wants to do. He really wants to land that left hook on uh, Rossman. And Galindez, I think, is coming to Rossman more than they anticipated. So they may use that to their advantage by maybe having Rossman, as you saw in their counter with the right hand. The light heavyweight championship on the line. Galindez against Rossman. Galindez, 11th title defense in the red. Rossman and the blue. Mike has tried to pressure Galindez, but there again he's on the rope. Galindez had no opportunity to turn and use those ropes to his advantage as Rossman ties him up. Rossman's guard, as you can see here in round four, still right up, just right under the nose, has not dropped yet. In fighting by the champion, Galindez. Al alluded to the fact, extremely fine upper body strength by the champion out of Argentina. Rossman uh, comes with the right hand after the jab. The Rossman jab is bothering Galindez. It isn't hurting him, but it's bothering him. There's a punch a little low by Rossman, and he taps Galindez on the shoulder as if to say, sorry, didn't mean that. Under 20 seconds to go in round number four. There again is Galindez spinning Rossman into the ropes to try to keep him there. In the closing moments of round number four, the champion teeing off on Rossman. Rossman getting some counter shots inside in round four. As there's the bell to end round four. It's the ring to see what he can do in the fifth round. Bell sounds and we're off. Glendis again has scored well, but for that part, uh, counter punching and also leading the attack early in the fight. Mike Rossman also has slipped some good punches in on the champion. Again, watches Rossman again flipping that left jab into the eye of Galindez, which was cut, but is so far holding up well here in round five. I think Galindez felt that when he got on the inside, as he is now with Rossman, and the lands punches like those left hooks, that Rossman will crumble. That may be, but right now, Rossman is holding up well under it and giving back uh, some punishment. This is what Galindez wants to do. Really maul and brawl Rossman, and he's, he's landing on the inside. Galindez has that very interesting style. He'll stay in that crouch. He'll get you to the body. All of a sudden, like a snake, he'll rear up and send a couple over the top, both a left and a right. And so far, Rossman staying in the crouch has taken him very badly up around the head. Galindez doing his best work of the fight on the inside here. But Rossman is, is answering back with some good counter shots. There you see the uppercut from Rossman. Now, this is where Galindez felt that he would just be able to dominate Mike Rossman. It is somewhat surprising that Rossman had done such a good job in the early four rounds. Now here in round five, he has made very little effort to maybe counteract that and try to get off of the ropes. He's staying in there. Maybe you say, hey, I want to try to go toe to toe and see what I can do in this particular situation. Well, it's a good point. He is letting himself be trapped in this corner. It could be he's testing out Victor Glindis, seeing just what he does have. And Glindis is spending a lot of energy trying to work the body and the head of Rossman and having a very good round. Both fighters head to head as they try to push to the center of the ring, but again, Galindez takes him back to the ropes, and Rossman has to try to answer every shot that the champion throws at him. This is the Victor Galindez early in his career that people saw almost all the time, uh, pushing forward before he got into the posture of waiting for fighters to come to him so he could counterpunch. 
That was a good counter right by Glinda's, but Rossman with his own right. So things really heated up here in round five. There is not a tether rope on Galindez. He can get further away from the ropes than that, yeah. but he does not like to. Rossman trying to lure him to the center of the ring, but Galindez says, nope, this is my office. This is where I'll stay. And in round five, he has done some damage on Rossman. But Rossman, by the same token, has countered well. Under 30 seconds to go, round five. Light heavyweight title fight from New Orleans. And you know, after all that, all that effort by Galindez, the mauling, the brawling, a lot of good punches landing, doesn't seem to have had that much effect on Mike Rossman. Still standing up very erect, still keeping those gloves up good and high, so the champion is battered, but Rossman has come back strong, and round number five will continue. Victor Galindez, the light heavyweight champion, Mike Rossman, the challenger, from Turnersville, New Jersey. Galindez from Argentina. Galindez again in the first five rounds, started to slowly but surely draw Rossman to the ropes. Even though he's fighting into the center of the ring, you know, Al Bernstein, that's got to be once again in the back of his mind where he wants to set up camp. Well, I think that uh, he's a little bit surprised that Rossman is hanging so tough when he's on the inside with him. And uh, then out at the center of the ring, of course, Rossman wants him at long range where he could peck away with the jab and mix in an occasional left hook and straight right. Well, now Glindis is there where he wants to counterpunch, but Rossman's being very careful. He's very. just hitting him and getting out, uh, not getting lured into... Uh, what uh, Galindas wants. Rossman again just actually in that fifth round was the only time that he decided to go on the ropes and stay there. Made very little effort to get off just trying to answer each one of Galindas' shot and for the most part even though we're not inside that Mike Rossman body I think did a good job at answering shot for shot. He did he fought well off the ropes it was probably Galindas' best round but uh, Rossman showed him that he could take it. Good left hook by Rossman and Galindez comes back with his own right. They're landing some good shots in there. Keep in mind as you watch the fight that Galindez was cut over the right eye early in the fight in round number two. It right over the right eye has held up throughout the early rounds. And so far here in round seven continues to be controlled. So far for Rossman it's been a very workmanlike performance. Uh, certainly a close fight at this point but Rossman's got to be pleased that he's been able to get in there with the champion and um, and perform this way. The way Rossman is fighting, I guess he would have to look back to one of his biggest moments, that six-round knockout of Mike Quarry back in 1976 is truly one of his big moments, and now he's got a chance to shine again in the sun. That win over Quarry was a good one because it put him into the upper echelon of the uh, uh, light heavyweights and uh, showed people that he could be a contender. And then he had to weather that loss to Yaki Lopez, and that's why this title shot is so important for him. And he's fighting very well against the champion from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Victor Galendez making his 11th title defense in the light heavyweight. You can start to see a little bit more blood collecting around that right eye of Galendez. It was cut early in the second round. Rossman aware of that. Keeps flipping that left jab right into the cut. And the jab has been a big weapon for Rossman throughout this fight. It's been something that he's relied on heavily. Rossman, keep in mind, has 34 victories and 21 of those have been by knockouts. So indeed does have a good knockout punch. Galinda is, of course, the stronger of the two, it appears, in the upper body, but so far it is almost a standoff here as we close in on the end of round number seven. Louisiana. Galinda's in the red, Rossman in the blue. Answer the bell for round number eight. Rossman again continues to just come out with a straight left jab. But again, he's followed that well with that right, right hook in particular. If you were just joining this particular fight, this would almost look like a carbon copy of round one, the way each have respected each other and have been very, very cautious not to let themselves be caught off guard. And quite obviously, with the punching power of both, they can't afford to. Well, that's for sure. And I think that... Uh... Galinda's maybe at this point has uh, a little more respect for Mike Rossman than he did going into this fight. Rossman did not have maybe the same credentials as some other light heavyweight challengers that uh, Galinda's has fought, but uh, what he's showing in this fight is that uh, Mike Rossman uh, is a, a tough customer. Sometimes, Al, when Rossman such is coming in as such an underdog in this fight with Galinda's, according to those that know the game of boxing, and it has a great deal of psychological effect both ways, I think, for Galindez, maybe a little overconfidence, 
but Rossman kind of a well kick in the back of the pants to get going. I think Mike Rossman's the kind of fighter too who needs that. He needs to feel uh, that he's the underdog. He needs to feel that uh, the world is against him to really get himself psyched and motivated. And uh, in this fight, he certainly has had that. And he's fighting very smartly and uh, I think a very intelligent fight. He's made Victor Galindez come at him a little bit more than Galindez likes to do normally. Halfway through this eighth round of the light heavyweight title fight from New Orleans. Mike Rossman, the champion Victor Galindez, have battled well here so far. Again, Galindez starting to push him into the ropes. Good straight ride, a looping right that time by Galindez slipping in. Rossman saying, I got to get out of here, and does as he heads back to the center of the ring. You know, Victor's hit uh, Rossman with some big bombs in this fight, the kind of punches that I think Galindez was convinced would really hurt Rossman, but. I think Rossman's showing us he is a very good chin. One of the things as you watch this fight now is we're under a minute to go in round number eight. Those punches, even though we've gone this far, still continue to hold a lot of sting on both sides. Excellent condition by both fighters tonight. They've worked at a very good pace here over these rounds, and uh, as you said, they still look pretty fresh. Both fighters trying to clinch just to try to catch a breath the minute we talk a little about their conditioning then they're both trying to catch their breath for a moment but it has been a steady pace it has not been a hectic pace other than maybe round five when they were on the ropes and really going toe to toe under 20 seconds to go here in round number eight Glenn is working well inside and uh, that is what he does best so as the light heavyweight championship fight comes down to the end of round number eight, Victor Galindis trying to hold off Mike Rossman. We'll have more for you in just a moment. Sam Smith along with Al Bernstein, light heavyweight title fight between Victor Galindis in the red and Mike Rossman in the blue, the challenger. An underdog coming to the fight, but Al Bernstein, he by all means has put that shadow behind him and is now fighting an excellent fight here in round nine. He's fighting on very equal terms with Galindis and uh, he is uh, fighting well in the inside when Galindez is there and from the outside using his jab and uh, left hooks to the body and the head to uh, keep Galindez at bay. Rossman again continues to use just the flipping left jab. Comes back with a good left jab and follows it with a right that time. Slipping in on Galindez on the side of the head. You can see the confidence of Mike Rossman growing as this fight goes on. Very much. He knows that he can stand in there with uh, Galindez. Glendis is like a little kid slipping into a candy store, though. He starts to slip closer and closer and closer to the bubblegum rack, and that would be the ropes as he tries to draw Rossman there. But I'll tell you, when he gets against those ropes, Rossman is doing a good job against them because he's not, he's, he's throwing his shots and then getting out. Although in this case, he's working on the inside, but he is, he's doing a number on Glendis when Glendis gets against those ropes. So for Victor, uh, the strategy in this fight, at least, not paying off. I think we are well past the moment of psychology with again Rossman coming off of that Yaki Lopez loss. He has clearly put that behind him with that great confidence Al alluded to. He now knows that he is very much in this fight. It is a difficult fight to score I'm sure because both Galindez and Rossman have had excellent rounds through these nine so far. Very tough a lot of even uh, flurries by both fighters and, and much of the action on the inside where it is tough to tell who's getting the better of it. Both the left and the right of Rossman missing on Galindez. Galindez very good at slipping punches. He just ducks. I would un I would anticipate that some kind of uppercut type situation might be something that could slip in on uh, Galindez when he does that. Well, that's what Rossman has used on the inside the uppercut. Galindez is a very good defensive fighter. He's good at blocking punches and slipping, as you mentioned, and that's why he can get away with that style of coming off the ropes. Most fighters would be lost if they backed themselves against the ropes. Again, I keep alluding to the fact that Galindez got a cut very early in the second round. His corner has done an excellent job in keeping that under control over the right eye. There is some puffiness. There is some swelling under half a minute to go here in round nine. And now Rossman starts to tee off for the left right. Galindez in trouble in the corner. Rossman knowing it, starting to come back. Galindez came with a left right to try to move away, trying to clear his head as we close in on the final 15 seconds of this, the ninth round. Galindez comes back and answers well after being in trouble by Rossman. Excellent a, ending to round nine. Here. It was a big right hand by Mike Rossman that turned things around here, and uh, that staggered Galindez. Gave away title for the 11th time, winning it back in 1974. 
Lynn is pushed out of his corner, shaking his head as he as he goes, trying to shake, literally shake the cobwebs out. So Mike Rossman surprised him with that big right hand. Now, how much does Rossman's corner tell him to come out and be overly aggressive? What punch does he do they tell him to look for? Now? He's got one of the fine trainers, Slim Robinson, in there working with him. Uh, and uh, I'm sure what Robinson has said to him is, don't get away from your game plan. Fight as you've been fighting. You had him hurt, but don't be uh, overly aggressive because uh, he still is that great, has that great counterpunching ability and has power. How many times have you seen someone have an end of a round like nine come out flailing away, and all of a sudden they are the ones that are on the seat of their pants? Rossman does not want that against the champion, Galendez, who he had against the rope and was doing a lot of damage. A straight right, particularly. Sending the champion reeling. Rossman turned him into the ropes and did more damage. Victor Galendez. 55, 9, and 4, the record. Has been a good champion in the light heavyweights, particularly when you consider that he is indeed making his 11th defense. But Rossman is not awed with that. And along the way, Galendez fought some excellent fighters. I mentioned Yaki Lopez, Eddie Gregory, won the title from Len the Stinger Hutchings, who is a a fine fighter beat Richie Cates and so uh, he's been in with some very good uh, light heavyweights during his reign as champion. Right now Rossman is really taking the action to him and he's mixing his attack very well to both the body and the head. And you get the feeling that Victor Glenda is uh, being sapped a little bit by this attack. We're just a little over halfway through this important round. On number 10 as these light heavyweights continue to battle. One minute to go in the round. Both of them trying to clinch a little bit more here in 10. It has been a very physical fight, particularly through four or five of the rounds when they were in this position. On the ropes, exchanging punch for punch. Maybe Galenda's back in round number five, taking advantage of Rossman a bit, even though Rossman responded well. But certainly at the end of round nine, it was Rossman that took the punishment to Galendez. And Rossman said, I've had enough in that position, let me change. Good move by Mike Rossman as he pushes Galendez against the ropes and then comes in with his own shots. Mike Rossman fighting so well on the inside, using the punch that you talked about, Sam, the uppercut. It's been a staple for him. Both fighters have taken a tremendous amount of punishment. Closing seconds of round number 10. Crowd here at the Superdome in New Orleans, delighted with the action so far. We'll continue with more right after this timeout. Sam Smith and Al Bernstein here with the intensity, starting to build in round 11, light heavyweight title fight. Victor Galendez in the red, Mike Rossman in the blue. Ten rounds has been a standoff so far, and now the fighters know that they've got to do some scoring down the stretch here, and round 11 should be a dandy. I think Mike Rossman in the last few rounds has certainly come on very strong, and in the last round had. Galindez in trouble, uh, and I think that Victor Galindez, at this point now, uh, with a cut uh, you can see around his right eye and, bl and blood coming from it, and I think the vision obscured there, knows that he is in a life and death struggle and that his championship very much uh, could be slipping away. This appears to be still another cut by Galindez. The other one was on the outside of the right eye. This appears to me near the bridge of the nose. So Galindez, just a bloody mess around that right eye. He has taken a lot of left hooks from Rossman there, and of course the jab of Rossman has, has pecked away at that eye uh, continually. And there it is again as he tries to get it in. The anticipation of the crowd starting to build two here in round 11. They too sense that something big is getting ready with these two as Rossman and Galindez start to measure each other even more from round to round. This is a genuine surprise, I think, to, uh, to fight fans because uh, they just didn't feel that Rossman could uh, come in here and do a job like this on Galindez, and boy, he is really starting to do one in the last several rounds. You can see the strength of Galindez, but you see that stay with us of Rossman as he says, I'm just going to stay right in here as long as you want to. And the referee lets them fight a big break for Galindez, you would think, except it's been Rossman who's been fighting well on the inside. That time, Rossman tried to come out, and Galindez actually hooked him with the left hand just to hold him in there. Round 11. There has been very few rounds that have been lack of action as we have one minute to go in round 11. 
it has been very steady. Indeed, and you know, one thing that Mike Rossman's done well is cover up on the inside and uh, slip punches from Galindas. So defensively, this is as good a fight for Rossman in many ways as it has been offensively. Good combination by Rossman. His hand speed, a big difference here, and now he backs Galindas in against the ropes. 30 seconds to go to end of round 11. Rossman trying to take the title away from Victor Galindez, making his 11th title defense. And Galindez, maybe not anticipating this much of a fight from Rossman, knows that as we come to the end of round 11, he is truly been in one of the heavy fights that he's had in his defense. We'll continue with more of the light heavyweight title fight from New Orleans in just a moment. The challenger Mike Rossman anxious to get ready for round 12 against the defending champion Victor Galindez. Light heavyweights have fought so far through 11. We're going to the 12th round and so far Al Bernstein Rossman is the one who appears to every round gain more and more confidence here. In the last three or four rounds Rossman has been so effective he's had Galindez against the ropes and uh, he's just been battering the champion and for Galindez the time is now he needs to get something going and uh, get his attack in high gear. But he's hit Rossman with some good shots, and it hasn't had that much impact on Mike. The first cut for Galindez came early in the second round. Through the mid-rounds, another cut developed over that right eye, and they have now started to create some big problems. Well, Victor Galindez, you do not see it here as he has his back to you. But every time Rossman has a shot, that left hand is slipping to the right eye, and it's causing more problems now, really in the vision of Galindez more than anything. And Rossman throwing such good combinations. Uh, that's one of the big things in this fight. He has really worked combinations very, very well. He's been the quicker puncher. Mike Rossman has not varied from his particular attack in this particular fight other than maybe in the fifth and again in the ninth. The fifth may have gone to Galindez as far as what he absorbed on the ropes, but the ninth clearly was on the ropes victory for Rossman against Galindez. And the blood around that right eye and Rossman is getting there with the jab often. So he is really adding to that problem for Galindez. Halfway through the 12th round. Galindez in the red, Rossman in the blue. Again, Galindez trying to get Rossman to the rope. Rossman saying he accommodates and comes in swinging. Well, the, the thing is now, Galindez isn't counterpunching at all off those ropes. And Rossman landing a big right hand just a moment ago, and Victor Glinda is reduced to holding on right now. Glinda's is starting well, to use the tired. ropes more as a as a soft, easy chair rather than a weapon. Now he's resting on those ropes. Tries to punch off, but Rossman slipping and blocking punches. You can see the cuts over that right eye starting to open even more. The blood streaming into the eye of Glinda. He's almost fighting blindly out of that right eye. And you can see the desperation. He lands a good left hook, but Mike Rossman willing to rumble on the inside with him. Rossman ducking and taking most of the shots by Galindez. It appears on the shoulders. I'm sure Rossman would probably have a different story of that in the ring, but it appears to be that most of those punches by Galindez on the ropes are indeed going on the shoulders as Rossman. Again, the combinations that Al has alluded to throughout the entire fight. Mike has looked sharp in this fight. Well, you can see how bad that right eye of Galindez has looked. You hear, of course, the Spanish being shouted from the Galindez corner, which is visibly shaken as Rossman has taken the measure. Rossman's already to the center of the ring. And you'll get the feeling the legs of Victor Galindez all but gone. He is so tired at this point. Much different than the way he anticipated this fight going. Did not expect Mike Rossman to be this kind of challenge. And right now, Rossman is just dominating the fight. Now, Galindez is in a situation where he no longer can just carry it to the end of the fight and think that he might have a lead on the card because it has not been that kind of fight. Rossman has carried himself very well, and indeed, he could have the lead on the card. So, Galindez has to fight in these final rounds. The Rossman 11th just, title defense of Galindez. And Rossman just rips combinations. Galindez in all kinds that's of trouble, it. and that's it. That's it. Mike Rossman rendering Victor Galindez helpless on the ropes. Galindez not answering any of the punches. 
goes over and congratulates Rossman in his own way and Rossman's corner excited and ecstatic as Mike Rossman has dethroned the light heavyweight champion Victor Galindis a bloody mess in his corner comes out on the 13th round and what a fight by Mike Rossman here tonight.